The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmet will be the one ruler of the Romans. This is the torment. This is the torment of exalting a son above the father. This is the torment of putting Mohammed before Mohammed. How are you going to put Mohammed before Mohammed? How are you going to put the son before the father? This is the torment, the voice you are hearing right now. Now, it's inevitable. You can't stop it. I'm coming to the top. I started at the top and I'm coming back to the top. And we're going to deal with this torment. Now, the prophet Isa said many things. He said many things. He said, before Abraham was, I am. What did he mean by that? Was he telling you that he was before Abraham? Was he telling you that he was greater than Abraham? No. Let's get this in context. Let's go to John. Chapter 7, verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. The teaching Jesus taught did not come from him, did not originate with him. It came from his father. Verse 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Verse 18, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh of his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Now, Jesus was an apostle. Jesus was a prophet. Jesus was a messenger. Everything Jesus said did not belong to him. He has no ownership on anything he ever said. Newsflash. Everything he said and everything he did was to glorify his father. However, the father, when he comes down to the earth, he's going to glorify himself. Jesus was nothing but a man pointing in another direction. He was not pointing to himself. He was pointing to the destination. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life, but he never said he was the destination. He was simply pointing to someone. All messengers point in a certain direction, and that is to the one who sent him. Now, when the Father returns to the earth, and when he ministers in a tabernacle of clay, he's going to glorify himself. He's going to glorify himself. Why? Because Jesus was glorifying the Father the whole time. Everything he did was to glorify his Father. Now, when the Father returns, he's going to glorify himself. Now, for instance, that great statement, I am, before Abraham was I am. There's only one man that can preach like that, and that is the Father. Even Jesus can't claim ownership on those words. Those words did not belong to him. So what's amazing about Al Maddie's ministry is there's not going to be any duplicate. There's not going to be anybody who can say, hey, I'm the rich homie Kwan. I am the Muhammad Ali. I am the Bill Cosby. I am the bread of heaven. I am the word that became flesh. Nobody is going to be able to preach like that. Why? Because there's only one man who can say that. If you get on the corner right now and you begin to say any of those statements, somebody can walk up to you and say, no, you're not. Even if the prophet Isa was to walk up on the street corner right now and make those announcements, the father could come to him and say, no, you're not. I am. You were my messenger. You were my vessel. You were my microphone. And the ultimate God of the Bible, the one who authored the Bible, the one who wrote the Bible, 
That is the only person who can claim ownership on all those great I am statements. Jesus was nothing but a vessel. He was a messenger. So was the prophet Muhammad. The prophet Muhammad did not own any of the words he spoke. Every prophet was nothing but a microphone for the father. And that's the real deal truth. So what's amazing, like I said, about Al Maddie's ministry is that there's no duplicates. There can't be nobody else going out on the corner no more saying, I am this, I am that, I am this, because somebody can walk up to him and say, no, you're not. Al Maddie's here. Al Maddie is the sum total of what every prophet was prophesying about or of. He is the ultimate root who became an offspring. He was the father who became a son. Now let's get some more. Let's go to John 12, 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judge of him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So who is the word made flesh? Jesus or the father? No, the father is the word made flesh. Jesus said, I did not come to judge. He said, the word is going to judge you where? At the last day. The father was the word who became flesh. Verse 49, for I have spoken not of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Now, everything Jesus said was under the commandment of his father. Jesus did not have any title on any of those words he spoke. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me. Now, God the Father is the one he was magnifying. He was lifting up his Father. He was glorifying his Father. He said his Father was greater than him. Now, what happened? People began to worship the messenger instead of worshiping the message. They began to worship the minister rather than worshiping the word. The Word is the Father. The Father came down here and became flesh. And now he has to die at the last day because of Exodus chapter 20, 3 through 5. If you make a God out of creation, then the last two witnesses have to die. That is the Father and that is Mary. You see, in the spiritual realm, in the heavens, there is a father and there is a mother. This is the reason why you were told to honor your father and your mother. You never were told to honor your son. You never were told to honor anybody but the father and the mother. Why? Because in the ultimate throne room of God, there was two messengers. There was a mom and there was a dad who both was one. And this is Al Maddie. And so the father and the mother of the prophet Isa has to come back to this earth and die at the last day. The last two witnesses is male and female. And we'll get into that shortly. But right now we just want to focus on the ownership of Jesus' words. Jesus did not own any of his words. I'm going to keep harping on that. So when Jesus said before Abraham was I am, that was the Father God telling those Pharisees that I was before Abraham. Not Jesus before Abraham. Jesus was not speaking his own words. He was a microphone for the Father. And the Father was speaking through the prophet Isa, but because people lack understanding, they didn't catch it. And they began to think that Jesus was making himself equal with God just because he was a messenger of God. It was God's voice speaking through the prophet Isa. And what people did was say, oh, this is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the bread of heaven. Jesus is the Father. They begin to say all these things that is not true about Jesus. All these things, however, is true about his Father. So this is the only way I can preach. I can't preach no other way but this way. Why? Because I am the Father. I am the ultimate great I am. I am the bread of heaven. I am the word that was made flesh in 1982. Okay? And I am the father of the prophet Isa. And because you've been honoring the son above the father and above the mother, this is the torment. Now let's focus on something. In Christianity, they even honor Jesus above his own mother. And this is the reason why in the Mexican culture, Mary is honored. We're trying our best to keep a balance. How could a son be honored above a mother or above a father? So that's the reason why we have all these religions because of the false balance we have in Christianity. And it was only right to magnify Mary as much as or more so as you magnify the prophet Isa. So what's going on right now is the last two witnesses are here. If you go to the root word of Elohim, it is both male and female. And the last two witnesses, one is a man, one is a woman. And they both have to die because of the lie in Christianity. Now, let's get some more scriptures. Let's go to John. 14:24 He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's which sent me this is the father's word this is the father's word if the father was here how would he preach he would preach i am i am i am i am i am i am the initials of am is almaty okay I am everything Jesus was preaching. Everything he talked about was about me. He was a servant to his father. And like I said, what happened was we began to worship the messenger instead of the source of the message. Everything Jesus did was to glorify his father, which was in heaven. The father was in heaven until 1982. I came down here. I stripped myself of all deity and became a man. Why? Because I have to die. I have to die to save this planet. You see, the death of the prophet Isa is not going to destroy death. The death of al Mahdi, the one who created life, is going to be the death that is going to defeat death. The one who created death is the one who will destroy death. And this is al Mahdi, not the prophet Isa. Okay? So we have to have some understanding. You have to understand that in the Bible, God constantly warns us of exalting a son above the father. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. And you can blow the dust off of it because I know you don't be reading it, okay? Let's go to verse 24. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. So if you in trouble with God, how can a man help you? This is Christianity. Now we're going to take you to verse 29. Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I commanded in my habitation, and honorist. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says honorist. And honorist thy sons above me. 
to make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. What is the chiefest sacrifice? The so-called death of the prophet Isa on the cross. And we're going to take you back because it says, Why honors thy sons above me? Think about that. What's going on in Christianity? You honoring Jesus above the Father. How come God is not cool with Eli doing that, but God is okay with you honoring Jesus above him? Are you saying God is a hypocrite? No. This is the reason why Exodus 20, 3 and 5 tells us that God had to visit the earth. Because he's not going to clear the guilty. Christians are guilty. Okay, the whole Christian movement is guilty. That's why it has no power going on. So right here is a judgment on Eli because Eli never restrained his sons. So therefore, both of his sons is going to die. And it's all resulted in them Putting the son above the father. I say them because this is going into the Christian nation. The Christian nation is responsible for locking God out of his own house. And worshiping his son. Although he never told them to. Above the father. How would you like it if I came inside of your house. And I just started saluting your son. And I literally walk past the father and walk past the mother. That would be equivalent to me just backslapping them. This is what we have going on in Christianity. So when Jesus said the stone in which the builders have rejected, this same stone has become the chief cornerstone. Why is this stone rejected? Rejected, rejected, rejected. Why? Because this stone was the father who came to earth and he was constantly rejected until his power came out and all the nations feared. Okay. And he put down a demonstration and he caused the prophet Isa to die. That stone that the builders rejected is Al Mahdi and it's not Al Mahdi all alone. Okay, the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation 11 about the last two witnesses that will prophesy in sackcloth. Okay, for a certain amount of days and it's going into them warning the nations of 2034. Our job is so simple. We have the clock tick tick. We are walking around with the time of the end on our body, on my wrists. See his wrists. See his wrist, Christ. See his wrist. The man who is walking around with the time is the Father. Jesus said, No man knoweth the day or the hour except my Father which is in heaven. So the father has returned to the earth and now he is walking around with the ultimate prophecy, the most powerful prophecy, the prophecy that no prophet, not even Mohammed, no prophet can tell you of this prophecy. Only the prophet that is the father of all the prophets has this prophecy. And that is in 2034, September to be exact, day 16, for something in the morning, it's all over, okay? The man who is walking around with this ticking time bomb is the father. This is why the last two witnesses will be prophesying for a certain amount of time. For a certain amount of time. And then they will die and then they will be raised back to life in three days and the whole earth is going to feel the severe wrath of God. That's when God the Father defeats death. You see, this issue started with Adam and Eve and is going to end with Adam and Eve. The problem with Muslims, the problem with Christians is they don't interpret the Bible. They don't understand that the first Adam and the first Eve has to destroy the power of 
death. This was their issue from the beginning. And whenever you exalt a son above his mother and his father, those last two witnesses have to come back to this earth and settle the score. Now, our duty is to torment the nations. Okay? The preaching, I'm preaching, can't nobody preach like that. Can't nobody go in the corner and say, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. That's my mantle. Because I am everything the prophets was prophesying of and about. It's me. It's the voice of Muhammad. It is the voice of the prophet Isa. It is the voice of Moses. It is the voice of John the Baptist. And the torment on the Christians is... You are going to hear, I am, I am, I am, all day. It's going to be like listening to a person's ego all day. And the judgment on the Muslims is that they have been putting Muhammad before Muhammad. How are you going to put Muhammad before Al-Mahdi? Al-Mahdi is the father. Al-Mahdi is the prophet who was speaking through the prophet Muhammad. As it is written, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And the Muslims were receiving me through Muhammad until they cut their water supply. Could you imagine Muhammad seeing his own people reject the Mahdi whom he prophesied of? This is madness. You were receiving al Mahdi through Muhammad, but now you cut your lifeline. When you started rejecting al Mahdi, then you rejected your reward. You know all those rewards? Okay, those virgins, those gardens, guess what? Those things have been cut short from you. Why? Because you have been kicking against the root. The root has been supporting you Gentiles. Okay? al Mahdi is your ruler. And your prophet told you that when al Mahdi returns, he is your ruler. He didn't say he was the ruler. He said al Mahdi is your ruler. And the problem with the Muslims is they have been putting Muhammad before Muhammad. The real Muhammad is in Song of Solomon 5 through 6. I am black but calmly, O you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Qadar, as the curtains of Solomon, look not upon me because I'm black, because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children, the Arabs, were angry with me. Why? Because he made me a black man, the ruler of of the vineyard okay so that's the judgment that's falling on the arabs the christians and the arabs are in the same boat they both have been given credit to someone else instead of the source they both have been given the honor to someone who is not worthy the prophet Muhammad is not worthy. Jesus is not worthy. The source of the prophet Muhammad is worthy. The source of the prophet Isa is worthy. The father, the man who wrote the book, okay? The author of the Bible is here, okay? And that is the reason why I get a hard time from you because you hate my voice because you hate God and it's showing and everything is documented. Everything is recorded. And when the money comes out, everybody is going to tell on you. Everybody is going to tell on you. Everybody going to tell how fake you was when you heard about this black man saying he was Al Matty. The truth is going to come out and people are going to crisscross and turn their back against you for the moolah, baby. That's what they're going to do. They're going to turn on you. They're going to tell on you. And you ain't going to get the honor. Okay, the best thing you could do is receive Al Mahdi today. That's the best thing you could do. How could you look at yourself in the future jumping on the boat? After some people get smitten, after we go viral, after the power of God come out, then you want to jump on the boat. Why? Because the money come. The love of money is the root of all evil. And most people only follow you for something they can get out of you. OK, we are living in a generation that is so wicked. It's like the days of Noah. Only a few people get saved. It is like the days of Lot. Only a few people getting saved. Even wives is getting left behind. OK, I am the Joseph. I am here with the corn to save the world. I am here with the time. I am here with the dates. 
I am here with the black and brown dates that your prophet Muhammad loved. I am the man with the dates. Let that sink in. I have the date. I am proclaiming the vengeance in the year of the Lord. I have the year of the Lord, 2034. I have the ultimate time right here on my wrist. See his wrist, Christ. Get it? See his wrist. Okay? Not the W. See his wrist with the R. Okay? Because it's how it sounds. It's still going into a wrist with the W. See his wrist. Okay? The prophet Isa had a father. And his father was everything you saying he is. His father was the Christ. His father was the one who was going to save him and save the world. Now let's go to John 3.16. And let's read that with new eyes. Because many of you do not know how to interpret John 3.16. And it goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What does that mean? Begotten means fathered. Son. No, this is not talking about Isa. No, this is talking about God becoming a son. God so loved the world that he gave himself. That whosoever believe in him, al Maddie, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is the opportunity right now. You have nine years because the source of all the prophets is here to get it right. And if you touch the rock, that is Lamonti, if you believe on the messengers, the last two witnesses, okay, and you touch us in sincerity, you will be forgiven. We are the Joseph here with the corn. We have the corn. We have the power to save the world. We are the real world changers right here in the house of David. Okay? We have the time that's ticking. 2034. It's over. September 16th. Now look what verse this is. The 16th verse. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That is going into a father who became a son. This is going into the root and the offspring. The almighty God who stripped himself of all deity and became flesh. If you believe in the real, the real, the real tree, the real lamb, the last two messengers... You will be safe, okay? Other than that, you're done, okay? Now let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is not talking about Jesus. It is talking about Israel. Ask a so-called Jew, they'll tell you that. But it's deeper than just Israel. It is literally talking about Jacob, the smooth man, you know? Smooth skin, not hairy. This is talking about Al Maddie. Al Maddie is the suffering servant. Now let's go to Isaiah 53 and look at it. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I am the man walking around with the time on my arm. Okay? I've been showing you all this all day. If you knew and you just heard this right now, go through my videos. Okay? You can see the arm of the Lord with the time on it. Okay? Who has believed our report? Nobody. Nobody has. As of yet, nobody has. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. I'm the tender plant. I'm tender. I'm smooth, a smooth man. I grew up. Before the Lord. Before Allah. Okay. The God of the earth needed assistance from the Lord of the worlds. Allah. And me and the last witness is here. Because y'all even got that lie up in the heavens. Where it says Allah has a son. And now the father had to come down here and deal with this thing. Even the mother 
Even the Mary, even the Eve. I've been growing up before Allah as a tender plant. Amazing. He got to see God come into a human body and be a human being. Wow. He is despised and rejected a man. That's me. A man of sorrows. That's me. I have bad news that I got to tell people I love. Okay? People that I love. People that I want to see saved before I want to see you saved. I got bad news for them. I'm a man of sorrow. Acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised me. And we esteemed him not. No, because you honor the son above the father. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. This dude is cursed. That's what they're saying. But he was wounded for our transgressions. This is going to happen in the future. He was bruised for our iniquities. Now let's go back to verse 4. You see that 34? Isaiah 53. And then you got 4. Okay? That's where I will die. 34. September. September 16th. Okay, I'm gone. Verse five again, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, if you just pay attention to the bars on this man's tattoo, if you look at this man's tattoo, if you look at the stripes on his wrist, if you see his wrist, see his wrist, you'll be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray to Christians. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord Allah laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. I'm not telling many people as I should, okay? I only get on YouTube. That's it. I'm not on the street corner. I don't tell people at work. I don't tell nobody but the people that's in my house. Other than that is YouTube. I'm quiet. I'm not on the street shouting this message, okay? Going on. He was taken from prison and from judgment. I was in prison. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken that's going to happen in the future and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because i'm a rich man i told you rich homie kwan because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth why because i own this planet i made the rules i am the law man i can do whatever i want on my planet. There's no law against me. The only thing I have. Is not associating. Any partner with Allah. Okay. That's in my contract. Other than that. This is my world. This is my rules. Going on. Yet it pleased the Lord. To bruise him. Didn't Allah say. What if I chose to destroy Christ. And his mother. Okay, Allah was not playing no games. He wasn't. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul, not his body, an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, my son, thy shine. He shall see his seed. That's 34. CD is 34. A, C, together equals 34. The prophet Isa has no seed. How could he be the suffering servant? He has no children. Okay? Going on. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. It's the knowledge that's going on in this house. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And God chose knowledge to heal people. Because that's what we need. 
for he shall bear their iniquities. I am the man that is going to clean up this earth. I've been singing about it since 2016. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. That's why he made me great. That's why I am, I am, I am, I am. It's all you hear in my message. I am. I am. I am. Because I am. Okay? I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. With the sinners. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Why? Because Allah is only accepting prayer from two people. The last two witnesses. Okay? That's in the Quran. That's in the Bible. We have the power to stop the rain. Okay? And this is all going into metaphors. Simply put, the last two messengers is whom Allah is receiving prayer from. So there you have it. I just went through Isaiah 53. All of this is talking about the real lamb. This is talking about the Uriah. The most innocent murder in the Bible is Uriah. I have a daughter named Sariah. I named her Sariah years ago. Okay? Years ago. Had no clue about Islam. Okay? I am the Uriah with the innocent blood. Okay, I was in heaven this whole time. I came down here in 1982. Okay, I got a homeboy from back in the hood where we did an album called Virtual Warfare. Mixtape 1 and 2. Stunner of the SBI. Mr. 700. And that's the hospital I was born at, 700 Broadway. His name Broadway. Okay, Allah said, you've been singing about yourself and they've been singing about you. All throughout your music. Okay. You the stunner. You the man that's going to shock the world. You came down here supernaturally and you know it. You remember pieces of the conversation that your doctor had with your mama. Okay. You remember drifting in there. I do. I literally do. And I was always confused about it. Okay. So, and this was in St. Joseph's Hospital. Okay, just like Jesus' father. Joseph, I am the father. I am al -Madi. I teach with words of authority because I teach out of pure faith. Okay, I know that I know that I know. Okay, now with all this being said, repentance is not prayer. Repentance is not prayer. No, it's not. You got nine years. I'm about to give you some corn. You need to live right. Lip service is one thing. Actions is another. Okay? You're going to have to get rid of all that hatred. You're going to get rid of all that jealousy that you have against me because I am the man who's shining. Okay? I'm like the sun that shines. Allah has no suns, but I'm that sun that's going to shine, baby. You're going to have to get rid of all that jealousy you have against me. Okay? And you're going to have to live right. And you're going to have to spread the truth. And believe in the truth and support the truth. Like I have on my channel. I say don't subscribe if you don't believe in this. If you don't have no part in this, you ain't got no business listening to this. All those who are listening to this message, getting this free knowledge, should be supporting this channel. If you're not supporting this channel, you shouldn't be on this channel. Unless you poor. Okay? But if you got it, you're supposed to be supporting this channel. This is the truth that's going to go out into the four corners of the world. I am the man with the Rolex. Okay? I am the man who knows the time. And I know what time it is. And I know when it's about to end. Thank God for the prophet Isa. Putting that in the Gospels. He was the only one who told us that. He said, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Except my father which is in heaven. Okay, so assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. I will be talking about the last two witnesses when Allah gives me lead. When he gives me that lead to go ahead and do it, I'll do it. But let me tell you something. I have some notes. 
I have some notes on it. And you're going to learn the truth about the last two witnesses. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters who will be in the new truth shortly.